It's now official. The Executive Council of the African Union has adopted some recommendations by PRC, Permanent Representative Committee of the African Union. About two days ago in this forum, we did explain the recommendations, but let's just remind ourselves of some of the recommendations that were made by PRC that have been adopted today, March 15th, 2024. The first recommendation by PRC was that Eastern Africa was to nominate the chair of the African Union Commission, while Northern Africa was to nominate the deputy. That was one of the recommendations. And then secondly, the issue of gender was not to come into play in that the Northern Africa or the Eastern Africa could nominate any gender, whether a man or a woman. Those were the key recommendations of PRC. And those recommendations have been adopted today, 15th March 2024, by the Executive Council. Let's have a look at that information as reported by Musalia Mudavadi's office. Prime CS Press Service Press release, African Union Executive Council asserts the right of the Eastern Africa region to produce the next chairperson of the African Union Commission. Addis Ababa, March 15, 2024, the African Union Executive Council today unanimously adopted a critical decision that it is the turn of the Eastern Africa region to submit candidates for the position of the chairperson of the African Union Commission, AUC. The election will be held in February 2025. This is a major breakthrough for the Eastern Africa region to present candidates for the position of chairperson of the AUC said Dr. Musalia Mudavadi, Prime Cabinet Secretary and Cabinet Secretary for Foreign and Diaspora Affairs. Dr. Mudavadi, who actively lobbied for adoption of, of the decision during the 22nd extraordinary session of the Executive Council of the AU, said the decision aligns with what Kenya has been pushing for. The decision is in accordance with the statute of the AU Commission, the rules of procedure of the African Union policy organs, and the decisions of the Assembly of Heads of State and Government. It is now clear that the Right Honorable Rairo Dinga will be in the race for the AU Commission chairperson. He said, effectively, there are no more technical or legal hurdles preventing Kenya from submitting its candidates. The decision also provides that the Northern Africa region will front candidates for the deputy chairperson, while the other three regions, Central, Southern, and Western, will compete for the six positions of commissioners. Dr. Mudavadi said Kenya will work closely within the 14 member states Eastern Africa region to build consensus around its candidates. These efforts are going and will continue to include all the other regions to ensure that the opportunity for electing effective leadership of the AUC provides a platform for uniting the entire continent. That's the press release by Musale Mudavadi's office. And Musale is just confirming what we knew, 
that the recommendations were to be adopted by the Executive Council. And it's now official, the Executive Council has adopted the recommendations. This is a topic we've been analyzing from so many fronts. In this video right now, I want us to look at this issue from a different front. What does Ruto and Kenya Kwanzaa government stand to gain if Raila Odinga wins that post as the African Union Commission's chair? I want us to dig deep into that. If you are watching us but you have not yet subscribed, subscribe, give this video a like. Let's proceed. If Raila Odinga wins that post, then Ruto and his Kenya Kwanzaa government, they will gain a political mileage. And I'm saying a political mileage because they'll be going all over the country and more so in Raila Odinga strongholds, preaching this message that they're the ones who gave Raila Odinga that post. And Ruto and his team are very good in taking credit for such like issues. So they will be going around the country and they'll concentrate mostly in Azimio strongholds, preaching the message that they're the ones who gave Raila Odinga that position. And even from this press release by Musalia Mudabadi's office, you are seeing they have already started taking credit that you know, it's us who mobilized and lobbied for that. Mm. So they'll take that political capital and mileage. The second benefit, that post of African Union Commission's chair is a very lucrative post. In fact, the holder of that office earns more or less the same salary as a Kenya's president. And we also know that there are other allowances. So the post can be too lucrative to a point. Raila Odinga might decide not to resign, but just to stick to that post. He might see the post as too lucrative for him to resign, to come back again to Kenya's dirty political contest as a presidential candidate. So that can also work to the advantage of Ruto and his team because it's a fact. Raila Odinga is the biggest threat to Ruto come 2027 considering the prevailing political situation in the country. So the post can be too lucrative for Raila Odinga to resign to contest for the presidency come 2027. That will leave Ruto with maybe other weak candidates who do not have that energy and stamina to mount a serious campaign as Raila Odinga. And then the third political benefit, if Raila wins that position, then that's going to elevate Ruto as a peacemaker. He'll be seen by some Raila Odinga supporters and even to the international community that he is a peacemaker, somebody who does not keep grudges. If he could offer to campaign for his fiercest challenger to get that coveted seat, that will elevate Ruto as a peacemaker. <laughs> And that might confuse some of Azimio's supporters. And finally, Raila winning that post will generally give Ruto a goodwill amongst Kenyans and more so amongst Azimio supporters. I believe that those are the main benefits or gains Ruto will have in the event of Odinga wins that position. And he will also be seen, that's Ruton, as 
a very good political schemer and strategist. Let me stop it there, ladies and gentlemen. If you are watching us, but you have not yet subscribed, subscribe, give this video a like. Any other person watching us outside Kenya, drop a comment, let us know from which part of the globe you are watching us from. If possible, subscribe, give the video a like. Let's meet in our next analysis. Thank you. God bless you. God bless Kenya. And before I forget, those who don't know, we are on TikTok, Dennis Odingo. If you miss us here, check us on TikTok, Dennis Odingo, where we also do daily political analysis. Thank you. God bless you. God bless Kenya.